Dear students, I am Dr. Rosad Gul and today we are going to discuss Salt Analysis Part 2 and this lecture is about basic radicals. We have already discussed in our first lecture about the presence of different ions in different groups. We have classified different ions into different groups and we have dealt with basic radicals in our part first now that's a continuation of this lecture, the continuation of that part. So in this lecture, we will go for the confirmatory tests of different groups. We will try to identify different ions from the unknown salt. First and foremost, we will take this group zero. We take an unknown salt and in order to confirm the presence of group 0, we put sodium hydroxide in the unknown salt and heat it. If we smell of ammonia, the presence of ammonium ion or zero group is inferred. And what do we do for the confirmatory test? When we have smelled of ammonia after putting this ammonium hydroxide, we bring a glass rod dipped in HCl near the mouth of the test tube. We observe dense white fumes of ammonium chloride. Why does this happen? These dense white clouds confirm the presence of zero group. Now, why it happens? First, the ammonium ion, it combines with sodium hydroxide, it gives rise to ammonium hydroxide. This ammonium hydroxide is unstable, it dissociates into ammonia and water. This ammonia, when it comes in contact with HCl, it gives rise to ammonium chloride. This ammonium chloride is a sublimate substance, that's why we observe dense white fumes. If upon testing ammonia is absent, it means zero group is absent. That means no smell of ammonia, no zero group. Now, our second group, for a zero group, uh, by second group I mean this is the uh, second uh, group that we discussed. Otherwise, it is named as group one. Just like we have discussed we had formulated a trick. Group 1 may add huge party here. Ag positive, this mercury monovalent, and lead diagonal. Arch huge party. This is a memorizing trick to remember the ions of group 1. Group 1 may add huge party. In order to confirm the presence, what do we do? We make the use of this reagent, and that is dilute HCl. Group 1 cations are present if white precipitate is formed upon the addition of dilute HCl in an unknown salt. The presence of individual ions can be confirmed as an Meaning, if a white precipitate is formed, it means any of the three ions can be present. This silver monovalent, mercury monovalent, or lead. But how to confirm the presence of these individual ions. First, let us take this silver ion, monovalent ion. If a light yellow precipitate is obtained upon the addition of potassium iodide solution, the presence of Ag plus 1 is confirmed. Meaning, if we add potassium iodide to this salt solution, we get potassium, we get silver iodide. And what is silver iodide? It's a light yellow precipitate. That's whenever we get a light yellow precipitate, we can predict that silver ion is present in that unknown salt. About mercury, again, if on reaction with potassium iodide, on the addition of potassium iodide, we get a green color precipitate, it confirms the presence of mercury ion. Why? because it gives rise to mercury iodide and mercury iodide. That's a green color precipitate. Now, lead ions. 
if a dark yellow precipitate is obtained upon the addition of uh, potassium iodide solution, the presence of lead ion is confirmed. Lead ion on reaction with potassium iodide gives a dark yellow precipitate. That is, whenever you get a dark yellow precipitate, you should know then and there that this salt contains divalent lead ion. Now we have got yellow color, these precipitates in case of silver as well as in case of lead. If from the intensity of the yellow color, we cannot make out whether it is silver ion or lead ion, then take the unknown salt in a test tube and put potassium chromate solution in it. If the precipitate retains the yellow color, it confirms the presence of lead ion and if the precipitate is red, we predict that uh, the ion present is silver iodide. Next, we have got group 2 and you know in group 2 we have got three sets of ions. We have got first set, uh, the memorizing trick was group 2 mein Punjabi Kursi or Bihari Hag Chalta hai. For this is the second set and this is the second, third set. If you remember the first lecture, we had make, made the trick Sana Skud Me Sab Sandhya. Now, let us go for the uh, general test first. That means if uh, on adding any OH, no smell of ammonia is observed and uh, on adding HCl, no white precipitates obtained then both group 1 and group 0 are absent and we will try to confirm the presence of group 2 base particles. You must be remembering that the reagent for group 2 is H2S. What we will do, we will make a solution of the unknown salt and add HCl. We will pass H2S gas through the solution. Uh, this H, uh, H2S gas is passed in presence of HCl. Why is this, this done? It will be clear as we proceed further. When we pass this H2S in presence of HCl, we may encounter different situations. And what will be there? We may get a black precipitate in the case of these ions. We may get a yellow precipitate in case of these ions. We may get an orange precipitate in case of antimony ions. And we may get a brown precipitate in case of tin. This is because, the color is because the sulfides of these ions have the respective colors. Black in first set, yellow in second set, orange in third set, and brown in third set. For this whole group, we will get a black precipitate. For this whole group, we will get yellow precipitate. In these two situations, C and D, there is not a problem because there is a single ion present. And even in case of D, there is a single ion present. But in case of A and B, we need to confirm the presence of individual ions. So what we will do for that? Before that, uh, I would like I had already uh, discussed that we add HCl. The purpose of adding HCl is uh, that we do not want H2S to dissociate much because in that case it will form precipitate of group four ions and will lead to confusion. How will the how will the addition of HCl inhibit the dissociation of H2S? This is an effect that you call as common ion effect. HCl furnishes H positive ions, H2S furnishes H positive ions, and in the presence of these H positive ions, this will dissociate less. You call it common ion effect. Now uh, we will go for the confirmatory test of the first set, as I have already discussed. Uh, in the case of all these four ions, we get a black precipitate. Now, we know whether the ions are PB-dipositive, CU-dipositive, bismuth-tripositive, 
mercury dipoles to how we will come to know. So then what we will do to confirm the ions individually, we take the salts of the above ions and add to them potassium iodide. We find precipitates of different colors depending the, on the presence of a particular ion. So what we will do, we will add potassium iodide salts to solution to these ions individually, to this ion, to this ion, to this ion, to this ion. And we will get uh, these uh, different color precipitates that will confirm the presence of these individual ions. In case of lead dipositive, you will get yellow precipitate. That means whenever you get a yellow precipitate upon adding potassium iodide solution, it must be a lead ion. If upon adding potassium iodide, you get a white precipitate, it confirms the presence of copper dipositive ion. If it's a black precipitate, it is bismuth, and a red precipitate confirms the presence of HG dipositive. Now we will come to the second set. This belongs to group two. In all the three cases, when it is uh, subjected to H2S, when the H2S gas is passed through it in the presence of HCl, all these three ions, they form a yellow precipitate. In order to confirm the presence of individual ions, what do we do? In case of SN tetravalent ion, we add HCl to the yellow precipitate form. That means we add HCl to this sulfide, the precipitate disappears and it becomes almost colorless. After that, when the precipitate becomes colorless, we add a pinch of iron. If we get a green shadow precipitate, the presence of Sn plus 4 tetravalent tin ion, it is confirmed. So, in the first case when it is uh, when it reacts with HCl we get uh, a colorless precipitate and in the second case we get this green shell precipitate that confirms the presence of Sn plus 4 or tetravalent I. For arsenic trivalent ion the addition of nitric acid and ammonium molybdate to the yellow precipitate of uh, this uh, arsenic sulfide gives rise to canary yellow precipitate and confirms the presence of arsenic. What do we do? We first add nitric acid and in the second step we add ammonia molybdate. So the end result is this canary yellow precipitate and the presence of this canary yellow precipitate confirms the presence of arsenic trivalent ion. For cadmium dialant ion, the addition of little KCN to the sour solution of cadmium, that is salt plus distilled water, gives rise to white precipitate and confirms the presence of cadmium ion. Here we have to be a little careful. We have to add this KCN dropwise because if it is added in excess, we will, we will not get any color precipitate. The precipitate will in fact in this case, when you add KCN, you get a white precipitate, but if you add this KCN in excess, you will get this compound that is colorless. You won't find any precipitate. If the unknown solution contains this antimony, trivalent or tin divalent ion, what will happen? In case of antimony, upon the addition of dilute HCl and passing of this um, hydrogen sulfide gas, we will get an orange precipitate that will confirm the presence of um, this antimony travel times. And in case of tin, we will get a brown precipitate confirm the presence of uh, this uh, divalent tin ions. This is all about zero group, first group and second. In the next lecture, we will learn about group 3, group 4, 
group five and group six. That will uh, and our these base radicals. We will complete the base radicals. Thank you so much. I hope you like the lecture. Thank you once more.